Shots in the Dark contains graphic depictions of events that may not be suitable for all listeners. We encourage all of our listeners to be open-minded and engage in dialogue with us through any of our social media accounts or email. I legit was like, maybe that's too mean. I don't know anymore. Nope, that's not getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never really, I'm so sorry. Oh, that was great. Hi, and welcome to Shots in the Dark. I'm Ty. I'm sleeping. <laughs> That's your new name now. <laughs> it, it's appropriate. Now that I'm on hiatus, I feel like all I'm doing is sleeping. <laughs> but I'm Whitney, and I'm a, I'm a sleepy baby bear. Yeah, you are. You know, you had a rough day. It wasn't rough. It was just tedious. Like, I just, I don't like sitting so still for so long. It makes me, and, and because I was donating the plasma today, because I was like, oh, this sounds like a fun experience. Cause I've always been told about like, uh, the weird sensation you get when, when they put the blood platelets back in, mm-hmm. they're always like, oh, there's a weird sensation. And I was like, that's, that's a fun notion. I would always, I would like to know what that feels like. <laughs> that seems really fun. Uh, it turns out it makes me so cold that I sit there and shiver, which oh, makes them wow. think I'm going into some sort of convulsions because I can't do temperature fluctuations, as you know. Yeah. But also, like, Duder was like, oh, you don't have to watch this. He was, like, going to put the, the IV in, or, like, the you know, the hollow needle. Yeah. And I was just, like, looking, and he was like, you don't have to watch this part. First of all, it's obstructed by an arm cuff, so you can, it's not like you can see anything. Also, who cares? Yeah. I, I know there's people that are afraid of needles. I am not one of them. Me either. Did I ever tell you when I got my wisdom teeth out? They they put the IV in to put me under because they were impacted and messed up. And I remember like the last thought I had, I was listening to the Coyote Ugly soundtrack, <laughs> Bad Choice. And then uh, the last thought I had, I was like, how come the liquid up in the bag is clear, but when it's like near my arm, it's like orange? And the nurse went to answer and I was like, oh. <laughs> It's my blood. And then that's the last memory I have of that moment was like, it's my blood. <laughs> I'm like going up. It's like, I've never had a whatever. My sister can't be in a room with a needle without like panicking. So I feel. It's weird. I'm scared of like hospitals and like doctor visits and everything, but I'm so not scared of needles. Yeah. I'm just, I started, I got so agitated from sitting for so long because apparently apparently my resting heart rate is a bit low so my blood doesn't go quite as quickly into the tube and also he was like we're gonna do this slow we're gonna start you off slow so that you get used to the feeling of it and i was like no just get it out of my body you can just cut it it's fine just take it i don't care make this fast i don't care but then you know almost an hour later i was like okay i can't sit that much long like i was trying to get to do anything to get to pump into the tube faster because I was just I started having like a chest tightening and I was like you will not have a panic attack while you're hooked up to this machine well I mean the blood will just start shooting out (laughs) it was obnoxious I don't like sitting you know that when Chevy was doing her phlebotomy classes because like they have to practice on each other she went to go practice on the teacher and something happened where she literally made the teacher's blood like shoot across the room yeah 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 (laughs) After that, I was like, maybe this is not my calling. <laughs> That's perfect. Ready to, ready to start this this bad boy up, this puppy, now that I've been talking about blood for 10 minutes? I mean, we can, but should we take our shot first? I guess. I'm a little bit worried, legit, about this shot, because I found out that bullet is mean and not cool. It will be okay. We've taken shots of Malort. That's a taste you can't ever get rid of. Cheers. 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 I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought, but no. it's not good. I thought it was pretty. It tasted pretty. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. Ty, I've been, <laughs> I lived in my hammock last week, and the only reason I wasn't in my hammock when you came here today was because I knew that it was going to rain tomorrow, and then it's going to get nice again, and then all I'm going to want to do is lay in a hammock that's not sopping wet, because I was being lazy, and I didn't want to have to put it up to take it down. It is really beautiful bonfire weather right now i'm like super happy that it's actually getting nice out again i know i burned all my wood i think there's a place out by me where i keep seeing that they have like firewood sales being advertised i'll be conscious so that i can let you know oh but murder 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 most foul (laughs) i'm gonna do the true crimes 
I'm going to remind you because I gave blood today, I'm not quite sure how that will affect my body as I've never done it. If, if you find me getting sassafrassy, I will if tell it looks you to like slow your roll. Yeah. The problem with that is, though, and I mean, I'll try to be like vigilant, but you're sort of like a sneaky drunk <laughs> because I never, ever, ever know Until where you're I'm at. laying in a doorway. You always seem like you're perfectly fine, like totally like sobs. And then all of a sudden it hits me because you have to put your hand on something to hold yeah. yourself up. The and lean. I'm like, the lean is the, the lean. Thing. Sometimes it's not even to hold me up. It's just that like... You know, sometimes you just want to lean on stuff. You and get I, comfortable. I just yeah. want to do it when I'm drunk. I just yeah. want to lean. I've fallen over in bars just because I've wanted to lean on things. I've gotten kicked out of a bar while sober because I went to lean on something that was always there. And then they had taken it out like two days prior. And they were like, you're done. And I was like, I didn't even spill my beer. I'm still sober. Like, what? You know me. But that lean is usually what gives it away for yeah, me. Yeah, the lean is, yeah, yeah. The lean. The lean in some of my commentary. But yeah, so I will I will keep an eye out. <sighs> Do you remember how I told you that there's for my story? Face. Yeah, there's a familiar face involved. And I kind of went back to like one of the things that uh, I, I feel is sort of like in my wheelhouse. I come back to this from time right, to so time. So I'm like, okay, so like cannibalism, but no, that's mostly me. Oh yeah, take take a couple guesses. Let's see. Yeah. Love triangles. Nope. Let's see what else is there on murder side. Dismemberment. You were doing a couple dismemberments. Kind of, but that's not it. Is it a cult? It's not a cult. <laughs> it's been a while since I thought something was a cult, and I just got an actual rush of happiness. It's been a while since you've asked me, is it a I cult? I know, I know. <laughs> oh, I can't up. I can't force it. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. Yeah. It's Japanese. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I wasn't even looking for region. I was legit just like, okay, what are the components that we talk about a lot? I can't help it. I just, they're so they're so fascinating no, to me. You're completely solid because I obviously continuously roll back to my, <laughs> my wheelhouse of some sort of cannibalism. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about the Tsuyama Massacre. Okay. Which is, I, I mean, it's really awful but it's also super interesting is this a familiar face like because we've covered one of the people that's in this story yes we have okay maybe oh no and that poor girl is it that girl that got abducted and i was like oh, i'm not no. telling you oh, shut up. well you're gonna tell me in a few minutes i mean i will tell you eventually because <laughs> yeah. you have you literally I mean, have to really it's i feel like you're gonna guess it before we even get there okay but it'll be fine let's do it it'll be good but before we start i want to share some information about Japan that I'm pretty sure that you already know because I'm positive that we've had a conversation about this before, but other people might not know this. I thought you were going to do a disclaimer and I was like, I think it's been a while since we've done a disclaimer too. No, I, I don't even think that this one needs a trigger warning. Yeah. And I also want to say that with the information that I'm about to share, I'm not like trying to tell anybody else how they should live their life. I'm not taking like a stance on anything politically. I'm just sharing some information. information because it's kind of pertinent to the story. And I think that it's really interesting. The population in the United States, it's about 327 million people that live here. And according to a New York Times article that I read, in 2017, the United States saw just shy of 40,000 gun deaths. I'm not in any way, shape, or form surprised. Also, apparently we're the murder capital of the world, dicks. Another source that I looked at had stated that in 2018, gun-related deaths in the United States were near 47,000. So yes. just keep that in mind. That's a lot. Yeah. But now let's also, let's talk about Japan, right? Mm -hmm. So Japan has a population of more than 127 million people. So to put that in perspective for you, that's just a little bit more than a third of the population of the United States. It's still a pretty significant amount of people. But Japan rarely sees more than 10 gun-related deaths per year. Mm -hmm. So it's super controlled and not really a thing there. Gun usage outside of the United States is way lower. Yeah, and part of it is that Japan was actually the first country to ever impose gun control laws. So it's one of those things where as soon as guns were being brought into the country, they were really kind of on top of it. Which is amazing. So, I mean, it's it's partly because of the laws, but it's also kind of part of the culture there that people just, they don't typically feel like they need to be carrying them. Well, I mean, it's the same in the UK. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Even now, if you want to own a firearm in Japan, you have to first attend an all-day class and pass a written test. Then you have to achieve 95% accuracy during a shooting range oh, test. Oh, that's awesome. 
After that, you need to pass a mental health evaluation at a hospital, which I think is so smart. No, totally. Huge, huge fan of that kind of ideology. And then after you do that, you have to pass a background check. And you are required to go back every three years and take the same class and pass the same written exam over again. I had read something, and I'm... I'm wary about putting this into the episode because I don't know if this is true. But one of the things that I had read said that in order to be able to get to the point where you can actually purchase a rifle, you need to have been able to own a gun for 10 years or more. So you can only have like shotguns to start out with because they're, it's only for hunting or for sports, essentially. Okay. That's the only reason that you can carry it. You can't get handguns either. That's I'm not mad at that. And every single prefecture in Japan is only allowed to have three active gun shops where you can purchase guns. So they are really good about limiting the amount of guns that come into Japan. And you cannot purchase a new cartridge of bullets without returning an empty one. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So you can't stockpile. Exactly. While Japan typically does not see a lot of gun-related death, they have their fair share of murder, obviously. For sure, yeah. And they've seen a few mass murders. So I've pulled some of these examples as quotes from a 2018 article written for the Japan Times by Jake Adelstein. And the title of the article, if you want to look it up, is called Examining the Motives Behind Mass Murder in Japan. I've thought about covering a few of these. Mm Mm-hmm. And I might, I might do it in the future, but uh, these are just like little snippets. I'm pretty sure you've, you've got Japan on lock. I only did, I think, one. I just, like I said, they're just really oh, interesting to I me. I did do one. I also feel like you're better at pronouncing Japanese names than I am, whereas I Americanize everything. But in all fairness, that's... Well, you've also be- taken Because I've taken Japanese, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first example that's in this article was uh, August of 2018... A former Yokohama nurse suspected of being a serial killer was served a third arrest warrant over several fatal poisonings at a hospital where she once worked. She's an angel of death. Ayami Kuboki earlier told prosecutors that she had injected disinfectant (gasps) into intravenous drip bags being administered to about 20 patients. That's so mean. It's terrible. That's meaner than most angels of death because normally they're trying to bring them back from the brink. Holy cow. That is Horrific. The second one, this is one that I was thinking about covering and I'm still kind of debating. Okay. July of 2016, former nursing home worker Satoshi Uematsu stabbed 19 people to death in a facility for people with intellectual disabilities in Sagamihara, Kanagawa Prefecture. That's really sad. Yep. Okay, so then another one, June of 2008, Tomohiro Kato drove a motor vehicle into a crowd before going on a stabbing spree that left seven people dead and ten people injured on the streets of Tokyo's Akihabara neighborhood. That one sounds ridiculous. It sounds like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I mean, basically. And then the last one that uh, I pulled from that article. June of 2001, a man named Mamoru Takuma, a former soldier and ex-convict, killed eight children at an elementary school in Ikira, Osaka Prefecture. Takuma remained unrepentant until his execution in September of 2004. Cool. Murdering children, like, that's solid. But even with all of these examples, and only spanning back to 2001, like, we could go farther than that. Japan's worst massacre to date took place in the Okayama village of Kamo in 1938, and that's the story that I'm going to tell you tonight. I want this to be about Sara Abe. <gasps> Is it about... <gasps> she, she might make a guest appearance. Oh my appearance. gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> We she, talk about her so much. Sada Abe might make a guest appearance. <laughs> oh, she's a familiar face. I'm so excited. <laughs> did I Did I for sure, though, guess it? Did I guess it? <gasps> you totally did. Sada Abe is going to be an element in this story. Oh, killer. I mean, nope. That's wrong. Oh, I'm leaving that in. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Okay, well let's let's jump right into it then, let's shall we? I'm I'm more excited about her appearance than I am about anything else. I'm just I, gonna say. It, to be fair, I was also very excited about it because I learned about this case first when I was doing my research for that story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How dare you make me smile so hard? <laughs> Who does this? Who I'm happy that you're excited. I'm, I'm super jazzed. So, Mutsuo Toi was born in Okayama Prefecture to his well-off parents on March 5th, 1917. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, both of his parents died of tuberculosis when Mutsuo was still a baby. So he and his sister, they had to go live with their grandmother, and they were raised by her in a small village called Kamo. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, unfortunate. Growing up, Mutsuo had a close relationship with his sister. And after she got married and moved out in 1934, he got like real upset spaghetti about it. Because they were, it was like losing your best friend to like a a person or was it because of like 